Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you all the Buildcraft transport pipes. Keep in mind that this tutorial is for the newer releases of the mod, specifically the 1.11 and 1.12 releases. A lot of pipes and recipes have been changed along with the addition of some new things. I am going to focus on the transport pipes in this video, but I plan to make other videos on everything else. Anyways, let's get started. The first pipe I'm going to be showing you is the wooden transport pipe. This pipe is used to extract items from inventories. To use the pipe, place it next to an inventory and connect another type of transport pipe to it. I will be using cobblestone ones. Then power the wooden pipe and use something like a redstone engine or pipe pulsar to extract the items. In case you were wondering, more powerful engines will extract more items out of the inventory per stroke. The next three transport pipes I will be talking about are the cobblestone, stone, and quartz transport pipes. These pipes all transfer items, but will not connect to each other. This means you can have a cobblestone and a stone pipe running side by side without them connecting. Each of these pipes can also move items at different speeds. The slowest is the cobblestone pipe, followed by the stone pipe. This makes the quartz pipe the fastest. Quartz pipes also keep the acceleration produced by gold transfer pipes twice as well as stone pipes do. You may be wondering how to easily connect a stone pipe to a quartz pipe. This can be done using a sandstone transfer pipe. These pipes will connect to any other transfer pipe but will not connect to any machines. These characteristics give them many uses. The main use is for connecting a cobblestone stone or quartz transfer pipe together. In this example, I am connecting all three types together with sandstone pipes as the link. Next up we have the iron transfer pipe. This pipe is used to join multiple input pipes to one output. This prevents items from going in random directions when they reach a pipe junction. To use the iron transfer pipe, place the iron pipe where multiple pipes meet. Then right click on the side of the pipe you want to be the output with a buildcraft wrench. As seen here, when items go into the iron transfer pipe from any side besides the output, they immediately come out from the output side. This mechanic can be useful for sorting or routing items. If you want to move items quickly, the gold transport pipe will come in handy. It simply speeds up items as they move through pipes. As I said earlier, this pipe is best used with quartz pipes for maximum efficiency. All you need to do is insert one or two gold pipes every 10 regular pipes or so. This will drastically speed up the rate at which items travel through the pipes. Gold pipes will connect to any other transport pipe and do not need to be powered. The next pipe I'm going to show you is the clay transport pipe. This pipe is used as an insertion pipe. When items pass through the pipe, it will attempt to put those items into any adjacent inventory. This could be a chest, dispenser, or machine. If there is no space for the items in any of the adjacent inventories, the items will pass through the clay pipe and go into an adjacent pipe. In this example, there is no room in the first chest, only room for one different type of item in the second chest, and the third chest is for leftover items. If you ever wanted a simple way to destroy items, the void transport pipe will probably fulfill your wishes. If any item goes through a void pipe, the item will instantly be destroyed. Although this is a lag-free way of destroying lots of items, you have to be careful not to let any important items anywhere near this pipe. The obsidian transport pipe simply sucks up items. However, there are a lot of mechanics behind this ability. By default, any items in the same block as the pipe will be picked up and transported down any adjacent pipes. In this simple example, the obsidian pipe picks up the items and then they are transported to the chest. Any items that are one block away from the pipe cannot be picked up without modifications to the setup. The main way to increase pipe range is by using engines. The redstone engine, steam engine, and combustion engine all will increase the range in a triangle shape as shown here. Any items that are placed outside of this triangle will not be picked up. Remember that this is a real triangle and not a blocky one. There is an invisible line coming from the obsidian pipe that separates items that will be picked up from ones that won't. Moving on, the difference between using a steam or combustion engine from a redstone engine is a matter of speed, not range. The combustion engine obviously sucks up items the fastest, followed by the steam engine and then the redstone engine. Here you can see I am throwing items inside the range of the pipe. However, I threw an item outside of the anisite blocks that was picked up by the pipe. 
This was because the item was thrown inside of that line I was talking about, as shown here. Turning on entity hitboxes might help you visualize this. Any items I throw outside of this line are not picked up by the obsidian pipe, but any items I throw inside of this line are picked up. Finally, let me show you a way to get the most range from an obsidian pipe. By placing it in the air as I have done, you can suck up items in a 9x9 block square on a platform 5 blocks under the pipe. This gives you the ability to use just one obsidian pipe to suck up items in a 108 cubed block area. If you were wondering how I got that number, you have to remember taking geometry. The area of a square pyramid is V equals the base edge square times the height divided by 3. I'm sure all of you paid attention in that class. Anyways, let's move on to the next pipe. The diamond transport pipe is used to store items. Unlike all the other pipes I have shown you so far, the diamond pipe has a GUI. In this GUI, you can place items in the slots. The color of the slots indicates the colors on the side of the pipe. If I put a piece of wool in the red slot and then feed one into the diamond pipe with another pipe, the wool would come out of the red side of the diamond pipe. This ability makes the diamond pipe's primary use sorting. In this example I have set up here, a red, green, and blue piece of wool are fed into the diamond pipe. The pipe then sorts the three different wool colors based on what I have set in the pipe's GUI. Here are the six different faces of the diamond pipe with their corresponding colors. The next pipe I'm going to show you is the wooden diamond transport pipe. This pipe is a cross between the wooden pipe and the diamond one. It extracts items like a wooden pipe, but has a few special abilities. There are three modes the pipe can be set to for extracting. These are whitelist, blacklist, and round robin extraction. Let me start by showing you the whitelist mode. When set to whitelist, any items put in the slots of the pipe will be extracted from the inventory the pipe is connected to. In this example, I have put a piece of red, green, and blue wool in the pipe. When powered, the pipe will only extract these items from the chest. The yellow wool is not extracted. The next mode is called Blacklist. Basically, this mode does the exact opposite function Whitelist does. Any items put in the slots of the pipe will not be extracted from the adjacent inventory. Just like the last example, I have a piece of red, green, and blue wool in the pipe. However, this time when the pipe is powered, it will only suck the yellow wool out of the chest. This is because the yellow wool was not specified in the pipe as being blacklisted. The last mode is Round Robin Extraction. This mode is similar to whitelist except it has a special ability. When powered and set to round robin, the pipe will extract one of each item set in the slots of the pipe. It does this in order and after it completes extracting all the items you have entered, it will restart the cycle. In this example, the pipe will extract a red, then green, then blue, and lastly yellow wool. Then it will keep doing that until it runs out of items to extract. The Lazuli, Dazuli, and Mzuli transport pipes are all related to each other. Let's start by going over the functions of the Lazuli and Dazuli pipes. When items pass through a Lazuli pipe, they are painted a specific color. This color is just used for sorting and does not affect the texture of the item whatsoever. On the other hand, Dazuli pipes act somewhat like iron pipes. When painted items go through a Dazuli pipe, they are sorted. If the item is painted the same color as the pipe is set to, it will come out of the sorted output side of the pipe. If it is not painted the same color, the item will continue normally through the pipe. Like the iron pipe, this output can be adjusted with a wrench. The wrench can also be used to select the sorting color of both the Lazuli and Dazuli pipes. Now let's talk about the Mzuli transport pipe. This pipe can extract items from chests, but can also have different presets. Right clicking on the pipe will open a GUI where you can add an item to each of the preset slots. These extraction presets can be activated using buildcraft gates, which I am not going to explain in this video. I am using a pi pulsar to carry out the extraction process. Here is a look at the presets I have set for this example. This is how the setup works. When I flick the lever, a red pipe signal is sent to the golden buildcraft gate. Because the signal is on, I have the gate set to enable the red extraction preset and activate the pipe pulsar. Since I put red wool in the first extraction preset of the Mzuli pipe, red wool will be pumped out of the chest. I also did the configuration for green, blue, and yellow wool. The Mzuli transport pipe has one more key feature. It is able to paint items as it extracts them. 
In this example, I have the same setup as the previous example except for the Mzuli pipe. You may have noticed that the pipe's GUI has an option next to each of the preset slots. Clicking on this tile lets you cycle through all the colors that the pipe can paint items. So if the red extraction preset is activated in this example, a red painted piece of red wool will be extracted. I have done the same for all the other presets. I also added Dazuli transport pipes to sort the differently painted items into individual chests. Technically the last Dazuli transport pipe is not needed in this example, because there can only be 4 types of items extracted from the Mzuli pipe. The last transport pipe is the stripes pipe, which has two great uses. This pipe can place blocks and break them. Basically when an item passes through the pipe, a right click action is performed. So passing a block through the pipe will place it, but passing something like a hoe through it will till the soil. In this example, a piece of red wool goes through the stripes pipe and is placed. The other main use of the stripes pipe is for breaking blocks. This function requires power from an engine. In this case, a redstone engine will break the wool, but it takes a very long time. Using a more powerful engine like a combustion engine will drastically speed up the breaking process. The last two things I'm going to show you are not transport pipes, but I decided to cram them in this video. First up, we have the cobblestone structure pipe, which is mainly used for carrying pipe wires. Keep in mind that these pipes cannot transport any items, liquids, or power. Lastly, we have the pipe plug, which is simply used to stop two pipes from connecting. They will also prevent a pipe from connecting to a chest or a machine. Pipe plugs can be extremely useful when working in tight or compact areas. Well, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or suggestions, please put them in the comments below. If this tutorial helped you, please leave a like, and if it didn't, feel free to tell me why. Lastly, if you want to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching!